there was a comment in the chat about, imagine if Iowa just had an average offense. Well, I converted that to average quarterback. I went to the Big Ten rankings, and again, the stats don't always tell the whole story. You could We can all list our Big Ten quarterbacks from 1 to 14, and they'd be slightly different, but understand uh, if you watch the game and watch and understand Big Ten quarterback play, we would roughly have the same list. And if you could just go statistically, the middle of the pack quarterback in the Big Ten is Sean Clifford, and he threw 21 touchdowns and eight picks. He got knocked out against Iowa, he, so he missed that game, and I believe he missed he missed the Rutgers game, so he didn't get to pad his stats against Rutgers. So he, he missed two games, basically, or a game in three quarters, um, and Penn State played a much tougher schedule because they played Iowa's defense. They played Wisconsin's defense yeah. In addition to the gauntlet, Ohio State in the Big Ten Michigan. East and Auburn as a non-conference game. Yeah, and guess what, uh, Brian Ferentz, um, Sean Clifford can run. He's not Michael Vick. He's not Vince Young. He's not that kind of runner, but he can threaten a defense and pick up a first down. And he's a pretty good runner too. Absolutely. So and, and here's your middle of the pack guy in the Big Ten. That's what he would give you. And how many touchdowns to how many picks? 21 to eight. Yeah. I mean, that's missing two games and playing the defensive lineup that he played. Right. I mean, there is no way there is no stat out there. And I've looked, I've combed through a lot of them. I, 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 there is no stat out there that I have seen that has indicated to me that Spencer Petrus improved in 2021. And it's not, again, it's, I've said it a million times. I'm not knocking Spencer. It's not, you rarely hear me come on here and rip players. I don't do that. I just don't have, I don't think that's fair to the players. I, I'm not afraid to be critical of the coaching staff. Um, I think it's a little bit ridiculous that we're shipping quarterbacks out to the East Coast. I've said that before, but that's a concern of mine. Uh, if, if there's not improvement and Mark, we can go back. I mean, even when Iowa was better at quarterback, they, they've not been elite. When, when is the last time they've been elite at quarterback? Well, I would say Brad Banks, Brian Ferentz would probably say Spencer Petrus because he basically said that he didn't like that Brad Banks stat line that year. That's basically what he said. He didn't like the fact that he was running all over the place. Now, Brad was also, I mean, Brad was just athletically, and he, he was he was most certainly an outlier. I mean, you're not going to get Brad Banks. Every, I'm not saying that he's available in the portal every year on the, on the recruiting trail, but the point is that would that would have been the last year that Iowa was – pretty darn good at quarterback. And you could argue the only year drew Tate was okay. Ricky Stanzi had his moments, but Ricky Stanzi also threw a lot of picks in 2009 and overcame it because of a really good defense and a pretty darn good special teams unit. Um, so yeah, th there you've seen quarterbacks that kind of plateau. Nate Stanley had his best year in 17, which was his first year. Um, Stanzi actually improved his stats from nine to 10 but the team didn't get much better. And I don't think the eye test, I don't think he passed the eye test. So he threw less, he threw less picks, but um, is that because he improved his accuracy and his quarterback player? Is that just because he was molded into it molded into a more conservative quarterback? I think there's a, a, there's a claim you can make there. And CJ Beathard was better in 15 and 16. I know he's hurt in 16, but that's that's I, I do I don't believe in the regressing that some people think quarter Iowa quarterbacks regress, but I do think there's a plateauing effect. Brian Ferentz doesn't want a quarterback who throws 26 touchdowns and five picks. That's Brad Banks. In well, let, let me defend Brian a little bit. What he said was they, the, the, the question was the, the question was was brought up to him from a, a, a rushing standpoint, and the number okay. I think he had what five, how many yards did he have on the ground? Like 500 yards that, that year. 423. <laughs> 423. Five, Boy, five, doesn't five, that nine. just make you salivate if you're an Iowa fan? I want people to tell me how that may how does that make you feel when you reflect you back on for the, 31 touchdowns. 400 almost 500 yards on the ground for Brad Banks in an Iowa offense. <laughs> Under Kirk. And take this into consideration. Petrus had a 117 rating this past year. Banks had a 157 <sighs> and this is at a point when 157 comparatively was much higher because quarterbacks ratings have get, just gotten better. They've just gotten more efficient. They've just gotten better. So that 157 is. Well, there's a reason why he was a Heisman hard. candidate, right? I mean, yeah. 
I mean, he's, he's a Heisman candidate. He's a quarterback at Iowa. Explain that to me. What's the last Heisman candidate we've had here, Mark? Anywhere on the field? Yeah. Real Heisman candidate. It's a probably been Brad Banks. Heisman candidate. There's not yeah. been anybody that, that uh, I mean, Epinesa, you, you have to be so good. You have to be so yeah. dominant defensively to to even be in that conversation. Yeah. And you now I know there was the Weissman for Heisman stuff back in, back in 2012 and 13. Uh, that was just kind of a, a joke. But uh, yeah, I guess Sean Green. Nick, thank <laughs> you. Great. Sean Green. That's a good point. Sean, Sean Green, Green did win yep. the Doak Walker Award. He was a, yep. a Heisman candidate. But Absolutely. Uh, I I forget about Sean because he was really here at the one exceptional year and then went to the pros. Um, but man, yeah, Brad Banks, what a, what a year. While we're delving back into the past, uh, of course, this is an Iowa show, but uh, one Big Ten note, of course, uh, rest in peace to Dwayne Haskins, passed away tragically at the age of 24. And uh, we're not going to get into it, but um, in relation to what we're talking about in terms of quarterback productivity, Iowa fans, just imagine your quarterback throwing 50 touchdown passes. <laughs> well, how many, how many does CJ Stroud have? 44. <laughs> so, oh, we'll, we'll take the lesser of the two, Mark. How's that? We'll take the Those lesser the of the two, two best figures in Big Ten history. We'll have, we'll take, listen, we'll take Stroud for half a season and it'll still be over. Think about that. Let's, let's break down the numbers, uh, Mark. And I know it's the Ohio State offense. I know that they've got uh, tremendously better skill position players in general. You take what CJ Stroud is a freshman, right? He was a freshman last year. What he did last year, cut it in half as far as touchdowns. If you cut that number in half, that's still over double <laughs> what Spencer Petras threw. <laughs> oh. oh. And Petras had the eight starts coming in from 2020, yeah. correct? Yes. Stroud had never thrown a pass. And Ohio State didn't have, it's, not like Ohio, it's not like Ohio State didn't have a good running game. Right, I mean that was a. They ran for twenty five hundred yards. <laughs> oh, that's not too bad, right? Oh man, yes. Uh, thank you for this uh, super chat, Erica. Um, appreciate we appreciate that. That's exactly why Iowa fans are frustrated. We have stellar defense and special teams. If our offense could get their act together, we'd go places. I, you know, I used to think I was the only one that, that kind of felt that way, but um, you know. I, I can see now that uh, there are other people who are frustrated. Not that I didn't know that before, but it seems like as uh, as we go further, it's amazing when I when I read comments on social media when when you've got and for the for the record, I think there's a lot of Iowa beat people that do really good writing about Iowa, and there have been a lot of this past week. There've been a lot of positive articles about the offense, and I mentioned the Tory Taylor quote that was tweeted out um, that you know. There's going to be less punts than ever before and all this stuff. I, I see all the comments from fans, and I know that Twitter usually brings out the worst in people. Man, I, I, I don't see any positivity right now with the offense, and I, I hope that I provided some, and I hope that we provided some when we broke down a, a, what I think is going to be a good, not real deep, but a good running back room, a good wide receiver room, and a, an offensive line with upside. I hope that we inspired some confidence there, and I hate to just dash that all today. But uh, I just I, I'm it's it's, it's upsetting because I, I don't like going through an offseason where there's just this much negativity. But at the same time, Mark, I understand to a large degree and to a large extent. Antoine has been watching a while and has evidently found the Iowa channel. So, Antoine, we appreciate that following us over from the main channel. And uh, he is adamant about this comment. I think he's posted it uh Maybe three times. So we'll we'll just address it here, Antoine. I don't know what team you root for, but um, yes, uh, Iowa very much made its its intent, its approach to the quarterback situation well known uh, in its uh, lack of activity. So to address your question about, do you say we will never get a five-star quarterback? I say money talks if you go all in with NIL to get one. This is after Antoine had commented and asked ourselves and the chat, uh, what what are the chances I was going to sign a five-star quarterback? I mean, there's almost no chance that that ever happens. And I hate to say this. But I think there's zero chance that happens under Kirk. I just, I, 
I, I don't know. I mean, Linez is going to be maybe the closest. Right, right now, he's a four star. I don't know how much. I don't think he can get to five star status. But like, I, I that's why I give a, a big attaboy to the coaching staff because they have recruited decently well on offense the, these last two cycles with Linez and Carson May both being four stars, and then the, the running backs that they've had a couple of guys who I, I believe are are both four stars. Um, but you know th- those comments that you made uh, that Brian made last week, Mark, that, you know, what, how he kind of views the quarterback position, that he's a distributor and his job is not to be running around. He's just to get the, the ball to the playmakers. That doesn't make any elite quarterback want to come here. Now, remember, they were very close to landing Zach Wilson. And he ends up going uh, to, uh, what, BYU, and then it ends up in the NFL and there's a high draft pick. So it's not that they haven't had an opportunity to land guys who could develop into that. And I'm not saying they, they won't. You know, hopefully they do. I, I don't have a lot of confidence in that happening with the current staff in place. I don't know that they have staff to develop these guys into five-star caliber players. We, when I say we, I mean college football nation tends to get a little hung up on five stars. There's only 35 to 40 of those players coming out of high school football each and every year. And there's about 300 four stars. Uh, I saw a breakdown the other day. This is pretty stark. Um, and I'm not surprised because I'd seen similar numbers. The percentage of five-star players that go on to play in the NFL, or I'm sorry, to be more accurate, are drafted into the NFL because the making it as a free agent was difficult to track. Uh, pretty exhausted for this individual, that uh, West Virginia guy that comes on, Travis Kenobi. Um, and, and his numbers line up with what I've seen previously, so I, I believe them. Uh, the percentage of five stars that are drafted is in the 40 to 45% range. Uh, four stars, it drops to between 10 and 15%. Three stars is about 3%. Two stars and below, it's minuscule, like 0. 0.0 something percent. So it means something. And it definitely and does. I know I'm beating a dead horse, Mark. Uh, I remember... Th- I, I always get a kick. I, sometimes I, I'll at times, Mark, just if I need a good laugh, I'll go back and read some funny comments that have been made about us or about me or about the show. And I get a kick out of one of our listeners that commented back during uh, this off. Well, during the uh, winter period, there go, there goes Corey beating that dead horse again. And I, I, I thought it was funny cause I did, I am, I'm beating a dead horse, but we're talking about Iowa probably never being able to land a, a five-star quarterback. It doesn't matter, Mark, if you can develop these guys into, into five-star players. That, that, we got to acknowledge that's what Fran McCaffrey has done at Iowa with Luca Garza and Keegan Murray. Neither one of those guys were five-star guys. Keegan Murray may be a three-star. And he's developed both of those guys. I mean, Keegan Murray's going to be a lottery pick in a couple months. So that's what Iowa needs to do with the quarterback position. And I do believe that's what is frustrating about the Randy Hedberg situation because Iowa could have had him. And what has he done, Mark? He developed Carson Wentz, Trey Lance, and Easton Stick all into NFL products, none of which were higher than three-star status. One of those guys, I believe, was a two-star, one was a three-star, and one was a zero-star. And all of them are are in the NFL now, Mark. And so if that were to happen, if there were a a coaching move where you get a guy, and John Budmeyer might, he might really be able to help, but John Budmeyer, Mark, he is not, he does not have the, the resume of a guy like Randy Hedberg or, or David Yost, or, I mean, you just, he just doesn't have that yet. And then maybe he will turn into a a great college football coach at that position, but he doesn't have the resume yet. If they had somebody like that to develop somebody who like Spencer Petras, like physically, I think if, I I don't know how to evaluate Spencer physically, obviously he's not real mobile, but he does have, I think he's got a decently big arm. He is a big kid, which can have its downsides as well. Um, Linez, I think, is very athletic. They have guys with potential, I think, physically, but they have potential. And they just got to develop them. And I just don't have confidence right now in the developers that are working with the quarterbacks, minus John Budmeyer, who I think the verdict is very much out right now. And again, I don't know how much he can work on the field. I don't know if he can work on the field. The report was that he was out there, and I guess uh, until the compliance office calls me back, Mark, <laughs> we won't know the answer to that. So I hope I, I hope I have an answer for you next week. And by the way, Mark, next week we're not going to just shut down spring discussion and spring previews. I know we're already, you know, over halfway into spring, but you know the one position slash unit we missed 
with special teams. So we'll hit that next week, I'm assuming, Mark. Is that sounding good to you? Sounds good to me. Can't we, miss special teams. We can hit special teams and we'll cover we'll cover every I mean, there's a lot of really crucial as we just in case you didn't notice from our conversation, there are some really important players on special teams for Iowa. And there was a question mark or two, specifically at long snapper, it struggled at times last year, and uh, even more consequential, I think, at place kicker. I've got several guys competing, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk special teams next week, and promise we'll be a lot more positive because I, I'm I feel a lot better about the unit. There's one thing I can guarantee: it's when I reference recruiting rankings and stars that and the importance and the validity of them that somebody will always grab the outlier. So of course, Ferris is letting us know Tom Brady was not a five star. Andrew Henson was the biggest recruit Michigan ever had. Yes, we can always, <laughs> we can always grab outliers. Well, let's That's be honest, Mark. The there are a lot of, I know you're talking quarterback, but there are a lot of outliers at other positions that have come from Iowa. I mean, uh, Iowa has just done a tremendous job developing guys on the line, tight ends, um, you know, not so much wide receivers and running backs, but almost basically every position on defense. So they have done that, but you're right. As it relates to offense, it's hard. It's hard to do that. Randy Hedberg would be, he's produced some outliers, right? I mean, fair or not, whether you think Carson Wentz is a great quarterback or not, he's an, he's a, he's a starting NFL quarterback. And uh, I think Trey Lance is on his way. We would love to have uh, some Iowa impact and influence on our Discord. So go to Patreon, search Mark Rogers TV, sign up there. We'll get you the link, and you can join us on Discord, and you can talk college football all the time. And, of course, join Corey at From the Hawkeye at the Storm right here on YouTube. So get on over there, check out Corey's work. 